What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are recreating a look from one of the most popular movies that I predict will be coming out this year, and that is Dune. I would say it's probably one of the most anticipated films this year, and one of the most anticipated sci-fi films probably in the last decade or so. I, for one, cannot wait to check it out, and so I really hope that I do it justice in this tutorial today. But the look we're recreating today is one that's more of a dream sequence look from the movie. To me, it's one of the more pushed looks, one of the more creative looks in the film. Granted, every single frame of this movie looks absolutely incredible, but I do want to make Make note of how important it is to shoot this footage in camera as it was shot in the movie so if you're trying to get this look recreation it does somewhat depend on how you've shot it so i'll cover that a little bit more as we jump into the tutorial but before we get into that i do want to mention if you're interested in learning a little bit more about aces which is quickly becoming the industry standard for post-production i highly recommend checking out that link down below it'll take you from not knowing anything about aces to grading your first project from start to finish all inside of aces so guys if you're enjoying the content please be sure to leave a like on this video subscribe to the channel for more awesome trainings be sure to follow us on instagram and with that let's roll the intro Let's jump right into it. So this one, we've got a couple reference images as you see here. And the reason for that is that not every reference image is gonna be a perfect representation of the shot that you're actually working with. So sometimes having two, if they're from the same scene, uh, can be even ben more beneficial. So if you're able to get your hands on two different stills from the same scene, excellent. We'll probably mainly just reference this image here, um, but just so we can understand what's actually happening here, uh, I've got both of them pulled up for us to you know, make a better assumption or make a better strategy going forward whenever we're recreating this look. So what is actually happening here, um, let's take a look at this from more of a cinematography perspective what we have here is an incredible shot um, shot mostly at sunset and we are backlighting our subject we have a little bit of fill um, probably a top-down fill whether that's just a bounce board or you know some kind of fill light there we are kicking a little bit of that light back into her face which is softening up the contrast uh, in terms of exposure so onto this shot as well you can tell pretty much it's all the same the difference here is that we can kind of see the sun there's a little bit more flaring uh, we have the sun actually in frame, or at least our light source, and uh, we have a little bit better idea of what the gradient and the roll off in the sky should be. So if we wanted to really get a one to one match, we could use both of these frames to see, you know, what are we going for? How do we rebuild it? What kind of you know, gradient and vignetting do we need um, to match this guy here? And there's actually not a very strong vignette. We'll pull up our parade here uh, to see that as well. We'll turn off our color palette. Actually, we'll set it to waveform and then I'll just display the Y channel. So this is our luminance of the sky. And if it was super, if it was a super heavy vignette, we would see this top line sort of taper off on the edges, on the sides, um, but it stays pretty linear across. So we don't need to really build in any super strong vignetting on top of what's already there. So let's go ahead and check out our shot. And as we see, we have a similar lighting scenario. Our subject is backlit. There's the sunlight coming through her hair. There's a foreground that's gonna be more neutral. And we're just going to need to really adjust tint and manipulate some colors and hues to get everything lined up with our reference. So let's go ahead and dive right in. We're gonna start off by opening up our scopes here. And this is gonna be a real battle because we do not have much space. And I usually have nine up and we're going with a two up on this one. So we're just gonna have our vector scope here. Gonna make sure two X is on so you guys can see it more easily. And then we're gonna have our waveform, uh, or actually we're gonna have our parade pulled up over here. We're gonna have that set to YRGB so we can see each color and the overall luminance because we're gonna need both. So for now, I'm just gonna drag this into the corner and I'll try and move it around as we need it, uh, as we see fit, but for now it's good there. So first things first, let's go ahead and pick a hero frame. And I think this would kind of work, uh, but I don't want her arm blocking too much of the face. So we'll go with this frame here. Now we'll pull up our still. We'll start off with this one. So first we're just gonna pull it up side by side and we'll zoom in as much as we can. Give ourselves a little bit extra space here. And the first things first, we're gonna start off with our temperature and tint and then we'll have our contrast going second. And one thing I wanna point out is that this clip is from a Red Raven. However, it was already compressed. It was rendered you know, as is. So I don't know the exact gamma and color space that it's in so i can't do a proper color space conversion because uh, you need to know those things that metadata is important to get a proper color space transform um, however it does look like it's already got a rec 709 led applied so we're going to roll with this as if it's rec 709 so we're just going to be adding our contrast and saturation in our primaries so we're going to take our contrast slider and drag it up a bit not going to go too far and then in our pivot we're going to try and bring some more shadows back up and that right there is enough so before and after on our contrast 
not a whole lot there, just keeping it subtle. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename this node to contrast. And then our first node, that's gonna be our temperature and probably tint as well. We're just gonna go over here and we're gonna take our temperature slider and we're just gonna drag this up. We're gonna take it way too far and then start to come back. And right around here is gonna do. So we've brought our temperature up to 2300. And the reason for that is that our reference image was probably shot at a color temperature higher or warmer than the actual light source, which is what gives us that warm glowy feeling. To the best of our ability, we need to make the, the source file kind of match that. And so we do that by increasing the temperature as one of the first steps, as if it was coming into the image pipeline in Resolve already at that temperature. So we're doing that in the first node, and then we can also take our tint and just more just to help them match, we're gonna take our tint and bring this towards green just a touch. And just right around negative 12. So already just by adding contrast and then a temperature and tint adjustment, no saturation, uh, this is where we're at. And I'll, you could leave it there if you wanted to, um, but that's not really grading. This is really just a correction. We've just taken our temperature slider, cranked it up, and then added some contrast. So what we really wanna do now is start really getting into the nuances of you know the shadows here and the tonality, the hue specifically of the sky here, that roll off, and then matching the luminance of the sky uh, separately from you know, just the overall contrast of the image. So now we're gonna go in and start being a little more precise here. And we're going to add a serial node and then a parallel node. And these two nodes are gonna be one for our shadows and then one which is just gonna be curves. And this is gonna handle most of our you know, hue versus curves, but also just our custom curves, RGB curves. So now we're gonna also need to handle our sky right after this. And the reason we're doing it afterwards is that we want to you know, adjust the sky, manipulate the sky independently of any other changes. We don't wanna blend the adjustments we make to the sky with adjustments made elsewhere because then we're gonna be fighting ourselves and we're going back and forth um, trying to balance the two. So the sky is gonna come after our shadows and curves adjustments. So for our shadows, we're just gonna go into our primaries wheels. And instead of having this in split screen, we're gonna go into the image white mode and we need to zoom out here. We're gonna take our reference sizing. I'm just gonna pan this over. Right about there is gonna be good. And then for our input sizing, I'm gonna pan this left. And that is perfect. So now you can see like, we got it really close just by adjusting the temperature and tint, but for grading purposes, they're not the same yet. They're not there. So what we're gonna do now is take our primaries wheels and our lift, and we're gonna pull this towards blue uh, kind of down towards green. And what we're trying to do here is neutralize the shadows, make them feel more blue, uh, get them closer to, to matching this right here. So that right there isn't bad. I'm also gonna take our lift and just drag it down. I'm just gonna make this a little bit darker as I'm really keeping an eye on these levels here, just dragging this down until they come to a pretty close match. And that's pretty good. Now we'll go back to the color aspect of this and try balancing it out a little more. Excellent. So now before and after here, see that is a massive, massive change. So now we're really starting to fill that color palette and we are just working on one thing at a time. Uh, with a grade like this and a look recreation like this, you kind of have to isolate things, but do it in the, the most global way you can. Again, using those big paint brushes. Um, so I'm trying to rebuild this really just using my primaries wheels because so much of this look really does come from the shot, making sure that you've shot at the right color temperature, making sure that you've set your, your talent up in the right way, according to the direction of the lighting, where the lightings come from, and trying to, to bounce back a little bit of fill into them so that you're matching you know, the way it was shot. You, you can't necessarily fix all this in post. You can't make any shot look like this one. Um, it has to be shot similarly. So keep that in mind whenever you're building this look. To an extent, it does have to be captured in camera to be suitable for this look. So that's looking pretty good for our shadows. That's all I wanted to accomplish there. Now in our curves, I'm gonna start working a little bit more on the hue, uh, mainly the hue of her skin and then the hue of uh, the sky, even though we're not gonna be you know, isolating the sky right now, I'm just gonna shift the hues around a little bit to hopefully make them line up a little better. So in our curves, we're gonna go into, I'm just gonna move this over so you guys can only see the vector scope because that's all we really need to see now. We're gonna go into our hue versus hue Set a couple of preset points and we're going to take our yellows and we're just going to pull these to be a little bit more orange. And then for our red, not sure it needs to move much at all. 
And honestly, right here is pretty good. That's a really close match, honestly. Uh, we can go into Hue versus Sat and see if we can get any closer here as well. I'm just adding two more preset points, clicking the red and yellow dot at the bottom there. Maybe pulling back a touch on our yellow saturation and maybe same for the red. Honestly, I don't know. I think I wanna, yeah, just leave those as is. Like if it doesn't need to be changed, don't change it. Um, so I'm actually not gonna adjust the saturation there. And for luminance, sometimes I'll go into luminance as well. I might pull the red down a touch. That's kind of helping her skin sit and give us a little more contrast with her skin against that more yellow sky. So that's looking pretty good. And I think we can just disable and re-enable this. Very, very small changes again, but every step just gets us a little bit closer. And these are pretty global changes. So as long as your footage you know, from the same sequence is, is shot similarly with similar lighting conditions, you're probably gonna have a decent time uh, just copying and pasting this entire grade. So we're still not done though. We're gonna go ahead and start working on the sky now. And I do sometimes, like I said, like to just zoom out as much as I can and, and see how they feel. What is really throwing me off here? What does not look the same? And honestly, I think our, our shadows are pretty close. Our skin is pretty close. The only thing really bugging me is the sky. I think we need to get the sky to be a little bit greener, um, possibly a little bit brighter or darker, actually. Um, looking at the parade, it looks like it needs to be a little bit brighter. So we're going to go into our sky node now, and I'm going to use a couple of different tools to attack this. What I want to do is look at where these two tones meet and try and get them to match here because these are the two outer edges of the frame. So if I can get them to match, they're probably gonna have a pretty solid match. So to do this, I'm gonna use my RGB curves. I'm gonna move the scopes over because I'm actually just going off my eye right now. And we're gonna go into luminance mix and we're gonna take this down to zero. And the reason we're doing that is that it gives us a little bit better control and it just isolates the changes we're making to the blue channel to where they're not gonna affect the red or the green channel. So it's only affecting the blue channel uh, whenever we're adjusting the blue curve here. So looking at this now, I need to pull a little bit of red out to get this sky to be a little more green. So I'm gonna select my red channel. We're gonna take our red point here in the highlights. And we're just gonna pull this down a touch. Right around there. And I don't want it to affect my skin. So I'm gonna to continue to disable and re-enable this just to make sure we're not messing with the skin. Um, but a good thing to note here is that because we're pulling from the top, we're affecting all the highlights more than the shadows because the black point here doesn't change at all but the white point is really what we're affecting. So now we're gonna go into our blue channel. We're gonna pull this down a little bit as well. And that's looking pretty solid. I think maybe you need to come up with a green channel maybe. Okay, that's a better match. And if we disable and re-enable this, you'll see we're getting things just closer and closer by every step. So let's go ahead and disable all the changes we've made after our temperature and tint. You see we're getting everything closer and closer on every node. I also like that we've kind of got these natural greens coming back. That's probably going to be a good sign for us. Um, I want to keep as many things in the frame looking fairly neutral and natural as we can um, while pushing this look to the extreme. So again, here's before and where we are now. We're getting things a whole lot closer and we're doing it in a very clean and protected way. So I honestly think I want to leave the sky right there where it's at. The only adjustment I want to make is let's go back into our split screen and look at the skin here. Like I told you, we did affect the skin a little bit because we're pulling that curve down as a whole. We're affecting it kind of linearly. So I want to maintain that red hue that we had there in the skin. So I'm just gonna click on the red channel and down here in the shadows, this waveform, which you're seeing in the actual curves chart, it's actually more of a histogram and you can make sure that's turned on by clicking the three dots in the right corner. And then in histograms, I have it on input. So it showed me the input histogram of the signal that is coming into this node. So I know that right down here is where the skin is sitting. So I'm gonna take my red point and just bring it back up a little more. So this way we're kind of canceling out the adjustments to the red curve have on the skin. Uh, we can go into our green channel as well, make another change here. And that's pretty good. Now we're kind of leaving the skin alone, but we are making global changes to the sky so that its hue matches a little better to our reference. Cool, so now we're gonna go ahead and add another serial node and we're just gonna do a slight vignette here. Again, nothing strong, but you, we do kind of see that in the corners of this frame. And to an extent, we're getting it in our, our own image as well, but maybe we just wanna accentuate that a little bit. So we're just gonna take a power window, gonna go back to our own image. So we're just gonna take a circular power window and we're gonna make this pretty wide and we wanna feather it to where it's just kind of hitting the corners here. So now we'll invert this window and then 
select everything. So we're gonna be adjusting the saturation and the luminance here by having those linked. And we're just gonna take a point somewhere in the middle and start to pull down a little bit. Now I think that vignette is actually a little too soft. So we're just gonna adjust this here. Gonna turn down the softening and increase the size. And now just before and after, it's not bad. And if we look at our reference, Zooming in, I think we're getting too much of, one, it's a little bit too too dark, but our reference is also a little bit more green. So we're just gonna take our red point here and then pull this down. So now our vignette is not only adjusting the exposure, it's also adjusting the tint of the, the sky there. So now we're going back to our sky node and maybe we're just gonna, gonna take this red point and just pull it down a little bit more. So now, even if they don't match perfectly, whenever they're lined up next to each other, it feels more natural. It feels like a better match whenever they're side by side. So that's another great technique to really bounce back and forth and see if you're matching pretty well. We'll just make sure that our image wipe takes up the entire frame and then turning it off and back on, if it feels pretty natural, then you, you know you have a pretty good match. And right now I think we do. So just to finish it off, I'm gonna add two more nodes and these are just gonna be our, kind of our finishing nodes. We're gonna have one for sharpening, one for grain, and then we'll go back and label this one vignette. So in our sharpening node, we're gonna go into our blur tool and just pull this to 0.47. That's generally a nice sweet spot where it's not overly sharpened and it still gets the job done. And then in our grain node, we're gonna go into open effects, type in film and drag film grain onto this. So now I'm going to zoom way in so we can really see what we're doing. And I'm gonna set this to 35 millimeter 400T. I want a smaller grain, but I want the, the strength, you know, kind of want it to be there, kind of in your face. Um, just cause that's, that's my style. So we'll just go back to our first frame here and play this back just to make sure everything holds up. And of course it does cause we pretty much built this look only using our, our big paint brushes. And then here's our, one of our reference frames. Here's the other, and here's the look we created. So bouncing back and forth between all three of these, we have a very convincing look. And so let's go ahead and go one by one through our notes here and see how we built it. So starting off, we just added some contrast. And this is not much going on, just adding contrast and made a slight change to our pivot so that we protected our shadows. And then we have a little bit of a temperature and tint adjustment here, which is really just taking our temperature, bringing it way up to 2300, and then bringing our tint to negative 12, which gives it a little bit of a green cast as well, which really helps sell that, that green sky that we have in our preference. Next up, we have our shadows node. Here we just kind of neutralized our shadows, cooled them off a little bit. And then in our curves node, we were adjusting the hue and a little bit of contrast still, um, just by the color separation we're introducing. And here we've given our skin a little bit more of a red push while maintaining that sort of yellow in our sky. And then next up, we have our sky node where we specifically isolate the hues of the sky. And of course, based on our reference, you do see that there's this sort of green cast there. And so we wanted to reintroduce that by using the custom curves and a luminance mix of zero, which means we're affecting each channel individually and independently of all the other channels. Next up, we have our vignette and this could totally be left out. I just wanted to kind of take advantage of it um, to kind of reintroduce that similar vignetting we had in our reference. And then lastly, we finished it off with sharpening and grain. And let's go ahead and check out the final look. that's going to do it for this one guys thanks so much for tuning in another look recreation in the books please be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what looks you want to see next and again don't forget we have that link down below for the free aces training it'll take you from not knowing anything about aces to grading your first project from start to finish all inside of aces so guys with that thanks so much for watching please be sure to leave a like on this video subscribe to the channel for more awesome content and with that i will see you in the next one